Hi friends, how are you doing today? It's Dr. Muragijes again. Um, uh, this is um, uh, day five in isolation due to um, uh, COVID-19 and my family and I are so grateful that despite some, um, you know, symptom that we are, some of us are experiencing, we are doing great and we thank you so much for your, your support. This is video number four in this ministry where we, ex we share our experience, how our body is handling this uh, disease. And also we do share some information related to the current pandemic pandemic. Again, um, these videos are, are, are meant just for encouragement and awareness and also we do share some evidence-based and nutrition uh, information and albeit these, these, these updates are not meant to diagnose or to treat. And we still recommend that if you have many issues, uh, any query rather, that you may just contact your 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 doctor. And also, please let's just obey um, the the guidelines set out um, uh, for this lockdown and for this regulation uh, um, related to to this pandemic. Yeah. So. Um, if you would like to check some of the previous videos, um, you can find them available at, at our Facebook page at Dr. Mora Health or at our website drmorahealth.com. All right. So um, yes, just a little bit of correction from yesterday um, when we were talking about the uh, ginger in pregnancy. I meant to say twenty grams, not two grams. Twenty grams. And um, if you you don't know what to talk about, uh, you can go and check that video um, as well. Also, you may see, find uh, some references um, at our website or web, our Facebook page of the uh, yesterday um, video. So in view of the COVID nineteen pandemic. Uh, caused um, by SARS-CoV-2 virus. There, there is an urgency where people have to look for, you know, a protective potential, a therapeutic antiviral um, treatment, um, you, you know. Why we don't have any yet, some people have been suggesting that certain food that, that are known to help with the common colds can also help with the COVID-19. So today we, we're trying to see, can we uh, supplement uh, vitamin C and zinc um, uh, is, is part of a pre, um, preventing and treating this pandemic, uh, this virus. So let's see what we know so far. Vitamin C is, uh, of course, it's, it is also ascorbic acid, as its chemical name called. It is a water-soluble vitamin, um, which, which, uh, which is basically a function as an antioxidant in our body. So it also works in collagen formation and free radicals uh, scavenging and also of course the whole immune, our immune to strengthen our immune system. So um, because of the because of this, one may be wondering, but how much then is um, are, are we supposed to, to have? Again, studies of course a study that I checked uh, about um, how much intake of vitamin C that we should we should be uh, taking. They gave people if you take about fifty milligram of vitamin C, your body is going to absorb about ninety percent of it, about eighty nine percent. But if you take more, if you take like 1,250 milligram, your body actually is going to stop, uh, uh, cut down the absorption. It will be like 46%, almost half. Now you may be wondering why is the why is it the case? Somehow you take somehow the body just adjusts it to certain uh, certain level. So the scientists often have a time to deal with things like that. So they found out the right recommended amount of vitamin C that you need every day is is uh, two hundred milligram. If you take that amount, the body is going to absorb what it needs. And, but if you take more, if you're trying to even take 10 times more than recommended, the body is not going to absorb that. The body somehow adjusts the, the, the vitamin C blood level to be at a, at a certain narrow range, which is around 70 to 80 micromole per liter. So um, you may be wondering, um, but where am I going to get a vitamin C, um, a 200 milligram vitamin C if I don't supplement? That's not a problem at all. If you take, if you take about five servings of fruit and vegetables, you should be able to get 200 um, milligram of vitamin every day. And some food that, that are high in vitamin C can be like, you know, all the green vegetables, such as broccoli, kale, things like bella pepper, things like uh, fruits like guava and, uh, and, uh, and strawberries. Those are food that are high in vitamin C um, that you shouldn't um, have a problem um, um, at all. So then you may be wondering, but why can't I just supplement? Well, 
Um, of course, I just mentioned that a certain amount, but also the the uh, the. Uh, Basically, the vitamin C is turned in, into what we call oxalate um, and in the body. Now, when oxalate, oxalate in, our, in our urine becomes too high, uh, it can turn into kidney stones. So there are st studies uh, since even 1996 where they found actually the high consumption of vitamin C supplements uh, links it to have a high risk of uh, kidney stones for formation. There's another study even in, in 2014 that had a, like 14 years follow-up study that also confirmed that and not only in the adult, even the kids now, the kids that are being given um, a vitamin C supplements, uh, there is a case study where the child actually had a problem because of vitamin C uh, supplements. So maybe wondering, is it worth the risk? Well, having vitamin C supplements won't prevent you necessarily from getting common cold. But um, what we do is going to make half how much common cold you may get and also help you with the recovery. So I think if you take a right amount, right amount of vitamin C, that should be, um, uh, you know, uh, should be great and um, but having said that I don't see why one should go through the side effects what we can actually get it from um, um, whole food uh, whole food, whole plant foods and um, but yeah but have be, has, has it been shown it to uh, to combat COVID-19 COVID I'm afraid not common cold yes but in, uh, in not um, coronavirus disease I'm afraid so what about zinc? Zinc is stress um, uh, mineral, uh, which um, of course our body needs and we need in a small amount. And um, uh, zinc is known now to modulate anti antiviral, antibacterial immunity and also to, to regulate um, the inflammatory, inflammatory response. Now because of this, these benefits, um, you know, also given this current pandemic, people have been su suggesting that people should, you know, stock up on zinc lozenges, uh, claiming that have been shown to, uh, uh, you know, to block the, the common colds, um, viruses such as rhinoviruses. And since um, almost 28 to 90% of most common viruses are, uh, are, are caused by coronaviruses. So, um, but as it turns out, there are 15 uh, actually randomized clinical trials that actually studied about the zinc lozenges supplements and actually found that is, that is very true. People who supplemented with the uh, zinc uh, uh, lozenges, actually they, they, they decreased uh, their symptoms, their severity of the symptoms and also they got um, better um, quicker. So um, having said that, um, you need to check, it's, it's about, about 10 to 15 um, um, milligram of zinc every two, uh, uh, two hours, but you need to make sure that it's, uh, it's zinc acetate or zinc gluconate and not, uh, not a zinc, not, not um, you know, uh, binded to a ligand like, um, like uh, citric acid or monitor and so on because you won't get the benefits of, of the, the, the zinc. So, can zinc help with the COVID-19? Well, they see, the way zinc uh, lozenges or the zinc supplements works, it just it it, it interferes with um, rhinovirus or common cold virus attachment to our, body, uh, uh, our cell bodies. So, um, that's how it does it. But it won't work with the COVID-19 because it's a receptor of attachment is totally different and that's something that I want to talk about uh, in the near future as well. So, if you do take um, uh, these zinc lozenges, please don't use the nasal uh, uh, swabs or uh, gel because these has been uh, shown actually to cause a permanent, a perm a permanent loss of smell. So, stay tuned uh, for tomorrow and may God bless you. Thank you.